Welcome to Commander Tunos with the Nitpicking Nerds. In this video, we're upgrading our patron Grits Katurchin's Mizzix deck. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, Beezy, and that makes us the Nitpicking Nerds. If you want to fund my German speaking lessons that I won't take unless you give us money, Patreon.com is the best place to do that. I clearly have no talent. I mean, yeah, Ger German is a tough language for sure. But also, if you want to support us without giving us money directly, we have affiliate links. TCGplayer.com is the first one. Go there using a link in the description below. Navigate and guess what? You buy the cards you are going to buy anyway for the same price you are going to buy them for, but the nerds get a kickback supporting the best YouTube channel ever. And I know that a bunch of people are thinking, but today's my birthday. I didn't forget about it. I just <laughs> moved it over here. Happy birthday to whoever's birthday is today. Big Important news, we support birthdays here. We often, we like to put the birthday in between our two affiliate links. The other one, dragonshield.com. Wow. Best sleeves in the multiverse. Good, good sleeves. Good sleeves. I was adjusting my hair. Uh, weird. I know. You never miss good sleeves. I never miss it. <laughs> you, you literally never miss it because even if I'm ready to say it, you say it. You're like. I'm like in the mic. You're like in the mic. Good sleeves. Uh, but yes, that's another affiliate link. Go buy those sleeves and you can get custom sleeves on their website. Again, kick back to the nerds. The sleeves are the same price you're going to get them for. And anywhere else, but we get a kickback. All right, all right. We got to do a commander tune-up. But what is a commander tune-up, you might be asking? Well, it's when patrons or Kickstarter backers or donors or, I guess, friends of the channel submit a deck for us to upgrade. And then we give, under all the restrictions and budgetary options, the best deck in the world. Yeah, the best deck that we can make. They have the restrictions can be budget or just basically whatever you want. Um, first thing we got to do before we get into what this deck is or anything about it, well, we have to talk about... What? Who's Mizzix? Well, what is a Mizzix deck? Two and a blue for a 2-2. Two -two. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell with mana value greater than the number of experience counters you have, you get an experience counter. Instant and sorcery spells you cast cost one less to cast for each experience counter you have. Mizzix really wants to amp up the mana value of spells it casts, so if it has one experience counter, it wants to cast a 2-drop, and then a 3-drop, and then 4 and a 5, and the best way to do that is to put a bunch of X spells in your deck, so that X is always however many experience counters you have, and then the extra mana in the pips, the cost, gives you that another experience counter. Obviously, this is a spell slinger deck. Instants and sorceries are literally, that text is on Mizzix, and that's what we care about. What we're going to do is we're just going to gain a ton of experience over the whole game and then cast big X spells to win the game. Yep, we had no budget when building this deck. There was no budgetary restrictions for us to upgrade this deck, so there's no budget. We're going to go crazy with it. And also, for restrictions, non-budget, it's build it and end style. And that's, I don't know how we don't do that. So we're going to do that. Well, I asked because the deck originally came in looking CEDH-esque. Oh yeah. So we asked, do you want a CDH deck? If you want a CDH deck, we can work that. We can, we'll try. We can make a CDH deck or we can build it more in our style, which is more of a seven through a nine power level, probably a seven or eight usually. And that's more of our style of build. Yeah. You can have a, a, a CDH deck or you can have an awesome Nipping Nerds deck that never loses ever. Before we get into the deck, we're going to talk about the best cards already in the deck because you got to know what we're working with before we start adding stuff. So the first one is Brass's Bounty. Seven mana, you make a bunch of treasures equal to your lands, but the six colorless or generic in the cost, that's what we're looking at. Yeah, exactly. This can cost one red mana in this deck, and it's just a big ritual that lets you store mana for next turn if you want to go off next turn. But if you cast this for one mana, you're getting seven mana, you're probably popping off on that turn. Yeah, because that's... That means you have six, six experience counters, now seven after this resolves. The world is your oyster. You're, you're, the game's over. I mean, this is not a CEDH deck, but this deck's going to get you dead real quick if you don't answer Mizzix. Yeah, the next two are a couple cards with a specific keyword ability, and that's buyback. First is Whispers of the Muse, which is one blue to draw a card, or you, and you can pay five to buy it back. Mizzix does reduce buyback costs, meaning you can cast this for one blue draw cards, you'll be able to get an awesome storm going and literally turn every single one of your blue mana into a card. Yeah, when you cast spells, you uh, apply the additions to the cost first and then the reductions later. So that's why Mizzix always works with like buyback and stuff. And Reiterate is three mana to copy a spell, but it also has buyback for another three mana. So it's only, if you have four experience counters, it's red, red, copy a spell, get it back in your hand. And with anything that makes mana uh, more than the red that you're going to use to cast this, this goes infinite because if you cast, let's say, a Seething Song to make five red, well, 
Reiterate copies it, buys back to your hand. Now you have five red mana and a reiterate with the original Seething Song still in the stack. So you just do it infinitely and make infinite mana and you get infinite storm. Yeah, I mean, the easiest example would have been to use Brass's Bounty, which is, you know, what card we already talked about. Same thing. <laughs> Same thing, yeah. You'll literally just go infinite. Brass Bounty is even crazier because you'll have infinite permanence. Infinite treasures, yeah. yeah if that matters. Uh, another one, Common Storm. This is just a wing con. We're absolutely just going to be able to get the... Uh, experience counters to the moon. Like, literally, you can get 10, 20 in this deck, potentially, if, oh, you're, yeah. if you're really going off. And that Comet Stone just kills everybody. I think if you can untap with Mizzix, which isn't that hard, you just don't play it on turn 4. Like, if you play it on turn 4 with no defenses, it's just going to die, and you're going to lose the game. But if you play it on turn 5 or 6, sit there, build up, hold up some counter spells, interaction, and you untap with it, I think you can just win right there and maybe even get up to the 20 range because we'll, we'll be talking about some, some ways to do that. Also, get Taxing Probe. It's a nice way to get the chain started when you play Mizzix. Just a zero mana thing. Gets you one experience, and it replaces itself. It's basically a free card. Yeah, I love that. I love that. I, it's so good in this deck because you you just, if it's in your opening hand, you don't just cast this right away in this deck. No, no. You wait till Mizzix's on the field, and then you're just always getting that one, whether you tapped out or you didn't tap out. It doesn't matter. You're getting that one experience. Now I'm going to throw out an honorable mention to Harmonic Prodigy and Veyram because they increase the number of triggers that give you experience counters. So if you would get one, you get two instead, and that just is nuts. All right, so now it's time to cut cards from the deck and add cards to the deck. The first thing we got here is card draw, cantrips, and tutors. Cantrips and tutors are kind of similar. Uh, cantrip uh, means you just, you know, draw a card. But a tutor is a good cantrip because you put the best card in your hand. Yeah, we're moving cards around. Maybe maybe card velocity. Card, card. <laughs> yeah, we're moving cards around. Uh, our cuts opt. This is just not good enough for commander at all anymore, especially consider... Thought Scour, Mental uh, Note, Mental Note, all of those are just a million times better already, and, and they're that, not even in here. And they're not even in here. And then there's we there's a card we're gonna mention in a minute, which is in our ads. Ponder, there's just so many to to do. Brainstorm, we don't have enough shuffle effects. It's a very good card if you have upwards of seven, eight, nine shuffle effects within your deck. I mean, we could throw a hundred fetch lands in the in the mana base, but like that's more of a personal preference. If you have a hundred fetch lands lying around. Go get them in the mana base, and then maybe you can play Brainstorm. Yeah, just throw all your red and blue fetches into your mana base. You literally get to... It's weird that two-color decks get to play, like, seven of them. It's don't crazy. You get, don't you get nine? Yeah, two-color decks get nine fetches slash shuffle effects if you count Prismatic, Vista, and uh, Fatal Passage. Yes, uh, so you can get a lot of them if you want to go that way. Also, cut Mind Spring. This is just the worst of the X draw spells in the deck. We just didn't need it. We'll get into what we put in instead. And Fabricate, which... It, I mean, this is basically going to be one mana get mana crypt. If there was, you know, some choices or some cards to get with this, it'd be better. But unfortunately, it's just always get mana crypt. And what makes tutors good is that they have a large variety of choices, not just one. Sometimes we don't need mana crypt. And then what are we supposed to do with fabricate? Nothing. Uh, absolutely nothing. All right. So we cut that mind spring, but we put in drown in dreams, which has X2 blue in the cost. And all that colorless is just going to go right away when we just cast this for literally blue and then draw a bunch of cards, and even maybe mill ourselves or an opponent. This could be a win condition, because you could force somebody to draw their deck and then somebody else to mill their deck, and that that's good with me. Also added Fire Mind's Foresight, which searches for an instant or sorcery of one, two, and three mana costs. The key to this is they're not really that in our deck because we're going to get X spells, which is going to mean that we just get to cast big giant spells with this, and it's only going to end up costing us two mana, most likely. Blue Red for an instant speed demonic tutor times three that all gets X spells that then all scale up. It's just this card is nuts. Uh, they also have Dig Through Time and Treasure Cruise. I think these are important, not only because they're easy to cast with high mana costs that count for Mizzix, but you can't, you're can't. you not going to always have Mizzix. So when the deck is overloaded with a bunch of these X spells, Mizzix isn't in play. These spells suck. They're terrible. They're not seeing play in any other deck. So we have to make sure, A, Mizzix is always in play, and B, we got some stuff to do if she's not. Then we have our biggest add to the deck, which was Time Spiral. There was no budget restriction on this, and it's we're not big on just adding... Like, Time Sparrow can go in almost any blue deck. Yeah. We are big when it's hugely synergistic. It is a ritual that draws you a fresh new seven while potentially disrupting opponents. This card is very, very strong in this deck. For blue, blue, you add four mana to your mana pool and then draw a bunch of cards. Anyway, Echo of Eons is another sort of Time Sparrow effect. You don't get the extra untaps from it, but you get two bites at the apple, and it's just going to be good for a lot of cards. Blue, blue, blue across all three, if you have four experience counters. Yeah, exactly. The, the key to making this card actually, like, this card is overcosted for its effect, but the key is that we're able to reduce it to make it, you know, actually worth it. When we're playing blue, blue and getting a wheel effect, that's very strong. Yeah, when I said blue, blue, blue across all three, that made no sense. Blue, blue, blue across both 
castings of it. There's not a third. Uh, Finale of Revelation is way better than Mindspring because it's X, blue, blue, draw X, except there's way more text on it. If X is 10, not that hard to pull off, you untap five lands and you have no maximum hand size for the rest of the game. So you're drawing 10 cards, untapping five lands, any X spell now pumps into those, you could potentially cast five X spells from those five lands, and I just gotta imagine the game's over. Yeah, and when you're really, um, this is one of those cards that is really good when you're far ahead. Oh yeah. Because when you've reached the far ahead point and you have the 10 or so um, experience counters, this card now becomes a ritual. It's a ritual, but even if, let's say you have seven, which is reasonable, now it's a free spell. <laughs> but you drew 10 cards for zero mana. And the last one was Ponder, which we already mentioned quickly. Next category, we have interaction. This deck had a lot of narrow interaction. I'll yes. Say. This interaction we just would not deem good enough to be played. And, like, it had way too much. It was, like, 20 spells that were interacting with the opponent. We still have, afterwards, like, 12, 13, 14 spells that interact with our opponents, and we cut this many. Uh, we cut Gitu Fire and uh, Karavik's Torch. These are just not good fireballs. They're bad fireballs. Common Storms are great fireball that we want to be using. These two are bad. We don't have a problem getting our experience counters up because any X spell will do that. So I don't really need a Doom Blade or like a, just a removal spell, one for one type thing. I don't. I'm really interested in that. And Fluster Storm, it's like a CDH card. There's some Magecraft stuff going on. There's like Archmage Emeritus, but that is not enough to keep this Fluster Storm in this deck. Yeah, Fluster Storm is a decent card, and if you have a lot of synergy with it, I'm in for it. Like if they went your commander, you're you're talking about something Ooh. a lot better where it gets interesting and like you can really, you know, push toward uh, wanting to play it. But it does not in this deck. Street Spasms, that's a very bad Magic card. Don't play Street Spasms. Curse Totem, again, a CDH card. Also can be a meta call if you know your meta is going to have lots of creatures activated abilities. Copy and paste Tails End in all of what you just said. Yes, literally the same exact thing. And we cut one, two, three of these X counter spells, Syncopate, Clash of Wills, and Power Sync. Oh, no, four. Condescend. I missed one. And you know what? Let's lump Rewind and Unwind in there because they're untappy counter spells that untap lands. Yeah, I, under I understand what we're going for here, and they're fine. Not quite good enough. And we cut Sublime Epiphany because it's cute that you can get it down to blue-blue and it'll be Counterspell, but we only have six creatures in this deck. That's the that's where you get most of your mana back and where yeah. you cheat mana value if you cast it for just two mana. Counterspell draw a card is like, but we can do better than that. We can do, I mean, we can do better than that, and when you don't have your commander out, this is not good enough. The, the power on Sublime Epiphany really comes from the copying a creature. All right, now there's still removal in the deck, but we're going to add some more. We got Reality Shift. It's just... This, the blue swords to plowshare is just nice interaction. I don't care that it doesn't, you know, give us an experience counter every time because, like I said, especially if we don't have Mizics, we're still interacting at a reasonable rate for mana. And yeah. then if we're ahead, oh man, Temporal Fisher, Storm Bounce a Permanent for blue. We've talked about ways to get Infinite Storm. So if you have Infinite Storm, here's your win con. No one has anything. <laughs> it costs four in a blue. We probably should say what the cards actually cost. Cause the it's on screen. Our idea is that we're gonna we're gonna reduce them. But if somebody's listening, like. One blue storm bounce a permanent? That's got to be an insane card. Well, yeah, and that's what it's going to do in this deck. That card's insane without storm. <laughs> that card is really good. Uh, we also have deflecting SWAT. This is just a great card. I, I, The reason I wanted this in the deck is Mizzix is a magnet for that spot removal. Having a deflecting, so we can play him on in turn three or four with one piece of ramp and then just hold up deflecting SWAT. And then he's not vulnerable to that spot removal. I like it a lot. Yeah, if we're sitting on, let's say, one random counter spell, um, I, we, we cut it, but let's say syncopate. So you syncopate the first removal, then you get an experience counter, but you have deflecting swat to stop the next one, which still gives you an experience counter because you cast it for free, but it's three mana. Yeah, I really do like it. And shattering pulse, this is a buyback. It's shatter, one of the red, destroy an artifact, but it's buyback three. So if we have our commander out, we can potentially get this down to just one red and just get rid of all the artifacts on the battlefield. It's. With four experience counters, which is pretty easy, it's like Shattering Spree, but it's like an emblem. You just do it whenever. You get <laughs> pay red, destroy an artifact. Yeah. Uh, on to the very last category here. It's, well, not the very last. The second to last category. It's Miscellaneous. These are just cards that were really random. First thing, Phantasmal Image. It doesn't fit with the deck at all. Our creatures are not worth copying, and we're not trying to steal our opponent's best creatures. I know that there is the potential for a, like, this is the one of the best clones. And yeah. if you're like, if you're thinking, I need to get something on my opponents, it could be good. That's not what this deck does, and we just don't want that. I mean, we're playing all the creatures we have we want, which is like six. How many creatures could our opponents have that we would ever want? Like, even if I steal a Worm Coil Engine or, like, a Villus, I just don't know what I'm supposed to do with it. Yeah, we also cut Simeon Spirit Guide. 
it doesn't fit quite in this deck. We kept in Lotus Petal because it helps our Storm Count, and that card is... The Storm Count helping is a lot better than a Spirit Guy that you exile from your hand, and the Monkey side is never relevant. No, don't play the Monkey side. Uh, another relevant card that was already in the deck that helps with, with Storm and Lotus Petal and all those shenanigans is uh, Underworld Breach. We're going to potentially mill ourselves, get stuff going. Brain Freeze, also in this deck, so we're going to... We got that combo. Mill a bunch of stuff. Brain Freeze, go for Infinite Storm, basically. Not infinite, but enough to win. And Lotus Petal helps way more with that. Simeon Spirit Guy just leaves the game and gives us a red. Yeah, exactly. And Reality Spasm, okay. I will say this. I do not know if this card is good or bad. We cut it because we were unsure. This card might actually be an amazing card, but without your commander, it's really, really... Obviously, it's awful. So the question is, is does when this is good with your commander, does it actually outweigh it? And I'm not sure about it, so we cut it. We, we're leaning on the side of, let's just play things that we know will be good. Like Thought Vessel is one of the ramp cards we added. Just another piece that's going to get Mizzix out earlier. We wanted to replace... Little monkey, Simeon Spirit Guide. Also, Mana Geyser, that's another way to go infinite with Reiterate, and it just makes a poop ton of mana, especially if you're only paying red, red for it instead of five. Mana Geyser is awesome. I love Mana Geyser. This deck actually has four ways now. We added three of them. Oh, no, wait. We added all four of them to have them maximum hand size. The, this deck is going to cast, draw X cards for as much as it can a lot. That's one of the big, that's one of the big plays. That's something this deck is going to do a lot. So I think Thought Vessel. And the other, and we mentioned uh, finale of revelation. Mm -hmm. Another way to get no maximum hand size are absolutely stellar in these decks. Plus two others that you will see very shortly. We yeah. also have passive flames. I don't know how I went my entire life without knowing that passive flames let you pay X costs. I guess I just never played against that. But yeah, if you have an X spell in your graveyard, you can still cast it for flashback with passive flames, and X is whatever you want. So Mizix will apply the cost reduction, and you get to do. All the cool things you just did again. I was quite shocked that BZ had never seen that interaction. Um, never have you? Um, <laughs> you I mean, that? I just know. I guess I, I've seen. If you've seen, you've seen Snapcaster flashback in X spell, right? Yeah, but I always hear about what Snapcaster can't flashback, and then I just kind of. I think I lumped X spells in with that. Okay. Like, but, oh, you can't overload a rift on a Snapcaster flashback. Yeah, yeah, but you can cast an X spell. True. <laughs> All right. Uh, next, we add two more spells. We added the big giants, flashy spells, the things that actually made us up the CMC mostly in this deck. Time stretch. It's 10 mana, take two turns, but eight of it is colorless, so we can get it down to blue, blue to take two turns, which is insane. Or expropriate is on the other side of this. It's seven blue, blue. It's a lot of text on the screen. Uh, I'm not you, gonna, you win. You win the game. This card's insane. If you cast it for blue, blue, I don't know how you're ever losing. I, they're both. I win the game, seriously. Um, they're just different flavors. I think actually Time Stretch is probably more of a slam dunk with Mizzix out than Expropriate because I don't care what you give me. It's, it's like the reason we're not playing Phantasm Luminous is it's probably not useful to me. Yeah, but uh, the difference is with Expropriate, you're guaranteed an extra turn and you get the big, usually the big... The best three things on the board, which can be big attackers and things. So, like, it does well, make a big with difference. With Time Stretch, you're also guaranteed two extra turns. You are, Well, I guess what I was saying was um, you get you get to bring threats to your turn to use for the next turn. Where, it's, as Time Stretch, you have to work with what you have. So, if you are if you have a less developed board, Expropriate will be better. And, obviously, Time Stretch is better on a more developed board. Lastly, you know we're going to touch the lands. we got to upgrade the land base, too. So, we cut seven islands. There was 14 in here, which is a... Very high amount of islands, and now there's, I think, what? There would be seven left if we cut seven. And what do we add, Jerry, because they're not islands? For the adds, we added four MDFCs. First, Shatter Skull Smashing. It's an X spell in the front. Bonus. Yep, which is super awesome for our deck. We absolutely want this in the deck. Salindi Vision, which lets you find instant sorceries. Super perfect for this deck. We're literally overloaded with them. And Valakid Awakening, which hopefully we can cast for a red and just loot away anything we don't want and get a fresh new hand. And the other way to get... No maximum hand size in this deck. Seagate Restoration. Draw a your hand size. And then you have no maximum hand size. Boom. It's This card is actually stellar in this deck. You're going to cast it for blue, blue, blue. Yep. Blue, blue, blue for like a draw seven, maybe draw eight. I don't know. However many cards you have in your hand plus one. This card is insane. Yes. And then for the fixing, the easy ones, Storm Carved Coast, Scolding Tyrant, Mana Confluence, and Fiery Islet. All just completely great and solid mana fixing for the deck. Also added Ancient Tomb so we can just... Well, Ancient Tomb should just be an every commander deck that if you can busted. afford it. And we're not on a budget, so, I mean, we probably should have avoided it because it's such a staple. But it's so good. It's so good. Get in the deck. It's in the deck now. And Reliquary Tower, we already mentioned, this is how you get uh, no maximum hand size. Yes. Uh, so, the budget for the deck, none. We had literally zero budget to work with, so we put in whatever we wanted. We spent $484.56. Damn. Damn. We're, we're good. good. I mean, notably, $200 of that is 
Time Twister. Yeah, Time Twister is a very expensive card. But it's also a very good card. Oh, it's insane. Yeah. The original CMC of the deck was 2.16. It was going toward the CEDH type status. So obviously one one high ones, low twos are what you see in CEDH. Uh, for the new CMC, for this nitpicking nerd style deck, it's 2.93. Something to note that I kind of just realized now, they're basically the same. Uh, so when I look at an X spell, the mana cost is one. Moxfield's going to show it as one or two. We cut a bunch of X spells, but we added a bunch of cards that cost like six blue blue or seven and a blue. Those are also one mana or two mana spells. What really should be is they both should average out to about three or four, which would raise the original average mana value and lower our original mana value. So they're both probably around like 2.4 or 2.5. Yeah, realistically, they're closer than they are because like you, of what you said about X spells. And the total number of changes was 27 for this deck. This deck turned out really sweet. Again, it's just a it's a storm. I like that we didn't go completely storm. This yeah. is a storm-esque deck, and it can storm off on certain turns for sure. With Mystic out, you could potentially cast 10, 20 spells depending on what you're doing. But that's not the whole game plan of the deck. You're looking to draw a bunch of cards and just go off with like a common storm and just yeah. one giant spell win the game. Main win con is make infinite mana with your reiterates and your, your nonsense, and then you just common storm somebody or well, everybody. Yeah, the thing is that like though this deck doesn't have a ton of tutors, that's a few, um, it doesn't matter. It's card velocity, the card draw, and the card selection is absolutely off the charts. So you're going to find these combos reliably in games. And there's so many cards that untap lands. You got Finale, you got uh, Snap is in here, Frantic Search is in here, the whole crew. Just so many ways to make mana. Deck's awesome. Yeah, they're known as the crew. The crew. The crew. All right, but that is our video. Special shout outs to every single one of our patrons. Love you all as much as you can without making you uncomfortable, especially you today. Grins. Katerin, I... Grinskaterchen. I'm so bad with the name. I think the name is is the German name for the Cheshire Cat. I could be wrong. I, you know what? Let's uh, We can go with that, too. Uh, there's also a link in the description if you want to support us on TCG Player by buying cards for yourself. No extra money is required to support us. Just start with the link in the description. Yes, that's pretty simple. Also, Dragon Shield, best sleeves in the multiverse. Good sleeves. Uh, you can get those sleeves using our affiliate links in the description below. You pay the same price you're going to pay in the stores for the cards, but you're supporting your nitpicking nerds. And they're not cards, they're sleeves. You're also supporting birthdays. You, you, Everyone's supporting Name birthdays. another channel that wishes you happy birthday. Uh, that's all I'm going to say about it. I think there's one other one. Remember our friend told us that existed? Nope. <laughs> I don't know. what it's, it's a bigger channel than us. It's not a, it's not a Magic the Gathering Name channel. Name another Magic the Gathering channel starring Joe Cherry's a Beezy that, that wishes you happy birthdays. Time to wrap up with a tidbit about our lives. What do we got, Joe? So we watched most Marvel stuff being busy. The only thing we haven't watched like in the past five years is the Eternals. And Black Panther for me. And busy didn't see Black Panther. But uh I this the Eternals might be literally the only like thing we haven't seen in a while. But like I'm trying to get busy to watch the Netflix oh. shows with me. Because they're really good. I mean, now is every season perfect? No, I hate Jessica Jones season two, but Jessica Jones season one is amazing, and I would absolutely. And the first two seasons of Daredevil are really good, and I don't think I watched the third one. Luke Cage season one's amazing. Those shows are really like they're very very good, and Iron Fist kind of just stinks. That's part of the, part of the problem is I know that there's so many good TV shows, and there's TV shows I love, but I could spend the rest of my life watching really good TV shows that I love. So I gotta cut it off somewhere. They they're like way in the past. They don't even matter yet for for Marvel, and I, I doubt they even will matter. This is probably good for backstory. Maybe Daredevil, but the rest of them is just like 0% chance. I, oh, Luke, I, you I should... got the superhero fatigue a little where if I wasn't like excited for a movie, I just didn't see it. I didn't see... I still haven't seen the first Captain America. I still haven't seen the first two Thor movies. I just There's a couple I just don't watch. Yeah, uh, but I really... The series on Netflix, I mean, they're kind of out of date at this point and people haven't really been talking about but they're very good the series are all really good and you should probably if I had to say, say watch one maybe Luke Cage Luke Cage might be the literal oh, best wow. one Snow and Daredevil Daredevil's amazing I heard great things about all of them but like Luke Cage the first season is just like it's really really good they're the defenders they're, they're all the defenders yeah Luke Cage Jessica Jones uh, Iron Fist and Daredevil I almost forgot Daredevil Though he did. Uh, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Spoilers. Uh, Daredevil does make an appearance in Spider-Man, and our, the people in our audience literally cheered. It is so random. And I was like, hey, that's Daredevil. That's uh, Daredevil. He's a, in, he's a really good lawyer. Really good lawyer. <laughs> Peace out, Trap Scouts.